A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss ice. Okay, not just any ice. We're going to discuss an experiment that confirms the existence of an extremely exotic type of water ice, referred to as plastic ice. In this case, suggesting that there are actually conditions where water ice can physically become sort of like plastic. It becomes really soft, it becomes malleable, and basically feels and behaves kind of like clay. But in this case, this is only in some really extreme conditions, something that was now recreated in a lab. And so let's talk about this new discovery and what this means, but I guess let's start with the obvious. And the obvious here being that the ice on Earth is technically extremely rare. Surprisingly, it's not something we see outside of planet Earth very often, and the ice we take for granted and the ice that's basically everywhere on Earth might only exist in Earth-like conditions. Or I guess just to rephrase this, even though there is a lot of water molecules everywhere outside of planet Earth, and in many cases, such as for example on comets, this water does become ice, all of this extraterrestrial ice is actually different from the ice on Earth, both in its structure and its properties. And that's something we've discussed in some of the previous videos in the description, especially with the discovery of new types of ice, but something that I think most of us don't realize, because we obviously take water ice on Earth, for granted. But to astronomers and to a lot of scientists studying extreme properties of various liquids, it's really the other types of ice that seem to be the most exciting. As a matter of fact, as of 2025, at least 21 types of ice are known to exist in different forms. Some of this ice is going to be crystalline, just like ice on Earth, or essentially it forms crystalline structures, but forming different shapes of crystals, like in this case this is ice 12, Whereas in other cases, ice can also be amorphous or to have structure very similar to what we see inside glass. And it's actually the amorphous ice that seems to be most prevalent in the solar system. So for example, most of the comets out there seem to possess amorphous ice and not crystalline ice. Which is actually very intriguing because water is the third most abundant molecule in the entire universe. And it's obviously found on most objects in the solar system and outside of the solar system. But it seems that water on Earth is unique in its composition and its properties and of course its structure, because the majority of water out there is very different. And it becomes even more extreme and more different once you start looking at planets like Neptune and Uranus, where the pressures are much higher and the temperatures increase with depth. And this also applies to various moons, for example the famous Europa, Ganymede and Enceladus. And even though we know that Enceladus seems to contain a lot of water inside, there's a very high chance that if there is also ice inside, it potentially has different structure, different properties, and does have different effects compared to what we expect from planet Earth. And that's because water by itself is already kind of strange. In most liquids, if you increase pressure, they actually tend to freeze at higher temperatures. And that's because pressure generally helps the molecules hold together and thus prevents liquids from becoming liquid. But because water contains hydrogen bonds, and here we're talking about very strong hydrogen bonds, water can actually become ice at temperatures below 0 degrees Celsius. And so depending on the pressure and depending on the temperature, water ice can actually form at least 19 separate ways, producing 19 separate crystalline phases. Actually there are probably more, it's just 19 have officially been confirmed. And once that phase has been formed, it technically stays stable for a very long time, as a matter of fact, 15 types of this crystalline ice can actually then be recovered at 0 degrees Celsius and at normal Earth pressures. In other words, a lot of this ice is basically what's known as metastable. So once it forms, it can stay stable for a pretty long time. With the main difference being crystalline structure and how the hydrogen is ordered, as well as density and of course different properties. And for most of these ice types, we don't really know how the properties differ. But when it comes to various planets out there, such as Uranus and Neptune, and of course a lot of different exoplanets, it's really ice 7 that seems to be the most relevant and the most important. And this is the type of ice that forms at very high pressures and very high temperatures, which we normally expect inside various planets. And while ice 7 and its molecular geometry has been known for a very long time, here it contains what's known as cubic geometry. And this is actually compared to hexagonal ice that we normally call just ice on planet Earth. So basically ice on Earth usually forms hexagons. More officially it's known as ice 1H. And though we expect amorphous ice to be the most common type of ice in the outer space, mostly present on various comets and of course in various molecular clouds where new planets are developing, 
When it comes to exoplanets, and even when it comes to planets in the solar system, the most common theorized ice is ice 7. And here, unlike ice on Earth, the hydrogen atoms are positioned in a slightly disordered manner. But intriguingly, out of all other types of ice, it seems to have the largest stability field, as you can see from this graph right here. In other words, it has a lot of different conditions where it can form and where it can exist. Here the structure is actually formed by oxygen, not by hydrogen. And so here oxygen forms these cubic lattices that create a kind of a backbone and can easily stay stable at many different pressures and at quite a lot of different temperatures. And though it can form in cold conditions, it does need to have a lot of pressure. Actually almost 100 times more pressure than what we typically find in the depth of the ocean. And these types of pressures can only exist inside massive moons or various planetary bodies. Although interestingly enough, this ice can also then transition to other types, such as ice 8, which as you can see right here, it can become if temperatures drop, with the only change actually being the order of hydrogen atoms. And so basically once hydrogen atoms becomes orderly, we get a slightly different structure referred to as ice 8, with both of them very likely possible in various planets. And so here by cooling ice 7, it can actually become more orderly. But for many years, scientists also speculated that in certain conditions and in certain pressures, the size can also transform into something slightly different. They believe that it can also become plastic. Specifically, once the temperatures go up just a little bit, with pressures going up to about 6 gigapascal, this cubic structure can then become a little bit more mobile and can actually create something resembling clay an unusual intermediate state between liquid and crystal. So basically ice that would be kind of soft to the touch if you were to somehow touch it. Or ice that would not crack, but would actually be molded and deformed because of the property referred to as plasticity. And that's obviously a type of ice we've never seen anywhere and nobody imagined it would even exist because it just sounds kind of strange. But turns out that under high pressures and high temperatures, cubic ice lattices can indeed become plastic with a recent study in a description confirming its existence through a very specific experiment. Now, first of all, when it comes to ice 7, the crystalline type, we know that traces of this ice even exist inside planet Earth. As a matter of fact, this study from 2018 definitively confirmed the existence of ice 7 inside diamond samples that came from approximately 300 kilometers in depth. Even explaining exactly how it forms and confirming the existence of this bizarre water ice inside our planet. But in this experiment, scientists wanted to find out exactly what happens to this strange ice when you heat it up and when you increase the pressures. Because the theory behind this suggested that the water molecules should actually start moving just a little bit or at least be able to rotate. In other words, unlike liquid, where the water molecules can easily move around, here the water molecules start to spin around but are still fixed in the same place. And so in order to test if this hypothetical phase can exist in real life, researchers conducted an experiment by blasting water samples with a very powerful neutron beam at temperatures of 320 degrees Celsius and at very high pressures of approximately 60,000 bars, which is basically in the middle of this graph for type 7 ice. And the way this neutron beam scans everything is by basically directly interacting with water molecules, which then refract neutrons in certain ways. And so if the water molecules are stable and if they don't actually move around, we expect these neutrons to come back in a certain way. But if the water molecules start to move, and especially if they start to spin, the refracted image is going to be very different and a lot more scattered. And so here by creating these scattering graphs and studying the energies, researchers definitively confirmed that in certain conditions, the size started to behave like a plastic. Specifically, once the temperature was about 177 Celsius and the pressure was about 30,000 bars, which is about 30 times higher than the deepest point in the oceans on planet Earth, the molecules of water started to rotate, producing plasticity effects. And thus producing very different properties and very likely extremely different effects for any planet or any moon out there that contains a lot of the size in these conditions. Which by itself is actually a somewhat intriguing discovery because here, this type of ice potentially exists on a lot of different objects. For example, Europa and Titan, both of which are expected to have a lot of water underneath, might actually be filled with this substance, affecting them in a lot of different ways we just cannot predict yet. For example, obviously, it could make these moons a lot more flexible and a lot more malleable. Which is actually something we discussed recently in the Titan video you can find in the description, because we know that even on the surface 
it seems to be very malleable because the surface of Titan does not seem to preserve a lot of craters. And though it has been suggested to be some type of amorphous ice, it could actually be this. It could be this plastic ice coming from within this moon. Likewise, something very similar could happen on Neptune and Uranus, and of course a lot of other exoplanets filled with water, high pressures, and slightly higher temperatures. And because this ice is also expected to be somewhat metastable, at least until it cools down, this might actually produce some really bizarre and still unknown effects both within the planet and outside of the planet, and could have even had unusual effects on the early planet Earth, since we know I-7 has been found inside Earth too. Although here on Earth there's not a lot of it, and only trace amounts have been found so far. But any large exoplanet with a lot of oceans and a lot of pressure is most likely going to have something similar. It's either going to have I-7 in its more stable crystalline form, or potentially this bizarre plastic ice, allowing any large planet to be very malleable, maybe even allowing it to change shapes. Especially if there is some kind of an object nearby causing tidal disruptions. Because here, a plastic ice is very likely going to have different effects compared to crystalline ice. Likewise, if there's a lot of this ice inside, it might even allow different materials to flow through it, creating an unusual diffusion. So basically, unlike crystalline ice that kind of prevents anything from moving through it, a plastic ice might actually allow things through, allowing an unusual molecular exchange. And so for objects containing salty oceans, this might actually play a really big role. For example, this might allow this ice to provide a lot of additional nutrients to some kind of an underground ocean that might exist on a lot of these objects. In other words, by confirming that this plastic ice seems to be real, the next step would be to find out what objects in the solar system and possibly planets out there are most likely to have it inside, and then to figure out what effects it might play in them. But until then, because everything else so far is basically unknown, that's pretty much all we have. We're probably not going to know more until there are more experiments, and we're probably not going to find out more until we can find a way to land on one of these moons, such as for example Europa, and to possibly drill inside just to see what's up. And so until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.